Hello, um, good evening to everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. Good evening. Okay, welcome, uh, welcome, guys. Thank you, well. teacher. <laughs> Okay, well, um, guys, um, you know, yesterday uh, working, uh, we left the, the, the development of, of the topic yesterday, uh, just watching a video. Uh, well, no, I left um, a video that you can watch in order to uh, create your studies. Uh, today, I mean, tonight, we are going to start with that activity. Uh, you're going to be um, telling to everybody the study that uh, you had for us. Uh, do you watch the video first? No sé si vieron el video. Antes yes. de crear su historia. Sí. Yes, sí, va, excelente. Yes, teacher. Bien. Veamos, entonces, eh, de forma voluntaria. ¿Quién quiere iniciar? Mi teacher. Excelente, muy bien, vamos a <laughs> Uh, today, okay. Um, uh, the words, the grandson, my grandson. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the day my grandson was born on September uh, 80, my first. Brownson was born at uh, 4 um, 45 p.m. in New York State. His name is Nicholas Isaac, and his way um, almost in point, and he is almost uh, 63 cemetery long. Did the day he was born, I was so anxious, scared, and very happy. Can always until I meet my grandson on December. He is coming to El Salvador for the holiday. I am very happy. Thank you. Okay, perfect, perfect. You're very happy because of that. Good, yes, excellent. <laughs> very, very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. So thank you so much for uh, telling us that. Okay, so um, I don't know if, if there is any other volunteer who wants to participate right now, or do you want me to choose one? Okay. Any volunteer? Me. Okay, perfect, go ahead. A scary story. Okay. One day, my grandmother was walking home after work because there was no transportation. She passed a bright and I was already falling. She came with two other people. Suddenly, they heard some terrible laughter. And my grandmother looked down and then a voice said to her, open mouth. They there were very scared and they ran out the, of the place. Only. Only that. Only that. Okay, perfect. Very good, very good, good story. Okay, and <laughs> as you can see, well, it's a scary movie, a scary um, history, okay? Good. Uh, let me see, uh, just let me check something here. Okay, good. Um, well, who is next? Any other volunteer? Me teacher. Okay, sir, go ahead. It's a story. When I was a child in the house, I lived in the, in there was not drinking water. In order to have water in the house, we had to go to the river to fed the water and taking advantage of the tree. 
once and for all. We took a small shower. What time I went to the river to buy when suddenly I hear a loud screech of animal. In my curiosity, I gradually approached the place where the screech depended. When I got close to the place, I saw a hard snake that was eating a deer and when I wanted to run away from the place, I could not because my body was paralyzed and I could not move because the hard snake noticed it and noticed me and it got closer and when it started to run around my body, just a woodcutter appeared with an X chart and hit the first X blow to the tail, cutting a piece of the snake turns to him in the bowl between the woodcutter and the half snake. Beings, after a while of fixing the woodcutter managed to hit him in the head and managed to split in two. Then Woodcutter took me home safely and from then on I never went to the river alone again. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, very good. Excellent, uh, Kevin. Very good. Good story. Okay, so you learn something. <laughs> so not go to the river um, lonely. Okay, very good. Uh, so who is going to, to be next? Any other volunteer? Me, me teacher. You, Joanna. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay. This Everybody. is your first time that you turn on your camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, very good, excellent. Uh, something, good. Uh, no fusion camera. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my my history is uh, the um, the kitty um the the uh, um pet um chapter one the adoption um about uh a uh, a years past years what the family uh, wanted. To, to have pet. Um, we decided um, it's called be a current. Uh, um, we look for a adoption, a want, a want month, or kitten. Uh, it was very, very nice and um, tender, como cariñoso. <laughs> uh, something. Um, um mau mau much very much <laughs> uh, and it's uh Marius um um uh, desesperate mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, chapter chapper two uh the bet the 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 bet uh, the visits of the the bet were so frequently uh, uh that is my use <laughs> Um, apathetic <laughs> uh, to go um, the current um, um, very thin for for its skin, parasitic, um, acaros. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's complicated. You you do the skinny, um, but we 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 took care and him um, and. And about is um, medicine it um, very low, mm, much low, uh, um, uh, money at sun. Um, we receive him a uh, grow. Uh, he, he has this desire completely. completely. Uh, this was funny uh, because it's. Uh, Look at so so we so well. Uh, no, the the king is is, is better. Um, 
chapitre de 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 chapitre de Kitty is currently on the one years years old. Uh, it's it's a uh, a bear help um, has a child. No, <laughs> uh, play a lot. Uh, it's a lot. Um, uh, no sé cómo se dice que, que, que se, va, se va a pasear. Eh, por tal, <laughs> por tal. <laughs> eh, and make a, a, a very happy eh, finish. Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, very good. So you, you can use like the expressions, he goes to um, eh, have a walk. So like walking uh, outside, something like that. Okay, very good, excellent, good, okay. good. Thank so, you. Nice, nice to, to, to listen your study about the kitty. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know if there is someone else here who wants to participate because I'm seeing here that well, we are 16 right now. So anyone else? Lorena, what about Me, teacher. You? Oh, you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Me, teacher? Or... Yes. No, you. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, it, it was a scary story. Mm -hmm. um, after midnight, it was around 2 a.m. when a chill ran through my body. I woke up. I heard a noise like when the wood cracks and a lot of plastic bottles drop. I didn't understand why I started to sweat and shuddering. I thought it was a disturbing person doing an things but when I turned to see any movement of my dog oh, the noise was very loudly and early in my house if any of my neighbors were doing anything near to the house my dog was capable of jumping out of the bed and start to bark but at that moment it wasn't I was so scared because the situation was strange what's going on I, I thought however at that point I felt like someone was watching me and I wanted to move and get out of my bed, but my body wasn't respond. I was stiff. Also, the noise didn't stop. I wanted to scream, but even my mouth and my voice was mute. I don't know how or when the desperation of me began to stop and that horrible noise I was hearing stopped too. The things I can remember about that moment was that noise and that wind chill through my body. My mama said that I had the misfortune to hear La Carreta Chillona. Oh, okay, okay. That's you, it. <laughs> that, that, that was a, an experience that you live? Mm, I live in, in the city. <laughs> no, no, but, but what I mean is uh, that's something that happened to you. Yes, to me. Okay, I see. So it's it's so scary, okay? Because uh, if you see like there's nothing in there, well, <laughs> I don't know what could be my reaction in, in that case. <laughs> okay, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, what what I what I'm what I was listening there. So, uh, your study. So it looks like. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Mm, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, so, anyone else who wants to share something with us? Yeah. No. It's my song. Okay. Very good, Lorena. Go ahead. I want to tell you, well, all, all of my classmates, um, about how I met my best friend or one of my best friends. Her name is Alejandra. I knew her because her family uh, asked me if I knew someone who could give her classes, math classes, because she's blind. And since my husband is blind too, I have, I have been working with blind people and I have, I know how to teach them. But when I go to, their, to her house, uh, I couldn't notice, I, I could notice that she wasn't just not only blind, she was uh, anxiety, she was, she had convulsions, she was depressed, 
she was well she had a she had insomnia and and she was she had she wasn't interested in receiving math classes and then it was very difficult for me to teach someone that didn't want to 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 learn and she was i was like the the last opportunity that they that she had at the college to 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 do their homeworks and to do her homeworks and everything and then when the pandemic came i i had to to be like like uh, the student i i was in my house every day i i was doing all the homeworks that she had imagine she was uh, at in first First, day, it was the first years at, at the in, in high school, and I had to be uh, working in thirteen or fourteen sign, sign assignments, and I had I was always worried because I had to do a lot of work. Sometimes I I, I was going to bed at 10, 11, oh. 1 p.m. 1 a.m. because I had to be responsible. Like if she was like I, I was her because. She wasn't uh, able to to do it, and when she got ready, the last the next year that she got ready because I I finished I imagine that I, I studied again, and I I I be again a bachelor, and I I I said her okay you have to let me your the the toga the thing that you use when you are in your graduation because i'm i'm graduating right now you're not <laughs> graduating it's my graduation and i took photos <laughs> and i put in every place because i feel really i felt that i was uh, graduating again and <laughs> and her mom was, was like a, a lorena made a favor but it was not a favor was imagine was my my time i get anxious i get everything but i i do it and then now right now we are friends so a lot of uh, we have uh, we enjoy too much time and i did it i i i really be happy to to know her and to to help her when she needs <laughs> okay good hey so that it's a uh, um is something uh well like it's like to say her Oh uh, well, that's diploma. That diploma has to have my name yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, was my name. It has to be there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Very good. Excellent. Excellent, Lorena. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um. Well, I, I don't know. Is there someone else here who wants to share a, a story, something that you have lived in? Uh, me. Me. Okay, sure, go ahead. Okay, my story very short, but I, I, I talking about my story. Uh, my story is about a beautiful princess uh, who come to change the life of the family. She's uh, very happy to see this girl who always changed the life she touched. Uh, she changed uh, her father's life uh, that the law for the daughter is in desperately and reminds her parents when uh, she was a little and because they care about hi him, uh, she may remember his childhood and his results that, the, that she was and take to singing yourself reflecting in your daughter. Uh, this is my story. Uh, this is a thrill. Uh, when uh, my daughter boring was boring. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all, right? Yeah. Okay, very really good. Sir, thank you for sharing uh, with us. That's sorry. Okay, very good, excellent. Um, anyone else who wants to share something with us? Me, teacher. Diana, okay, go ahead. Okay, this is the story of how I, me and my best friend organized a trip to Guatemala okay. at the last minute. Mm. <laughs> she and I were on August vacation 
and on Wednesday we went to see a play at the theater mm -hmm. and then we went to dinner while we were in the dinner we talked about how cool it will be to go on a trip together and we started looking for tour operators on face on Facebook and the only one we found with close dates was some that just had a trip available in two days. We hired them and went on a beautiful trip of two days and one night in the city of Guatemala. It was short, but unforgettable. Okay, very good, excellent. So that's, uh, you, you planned that at, at the last time, that, that's what you mean, right? Yes. Okay, good. So, and how it was? It was good. So it was really great. We went to Aurora Zoo mm -hmm. and and Oakland Mall and you went to, to the uh, Aurora Zoo? Yes. Okay, very good. I've been there. So <laughs> there are a lot of <laughs> animals that uh well we can we don't have a zoo like that here in El Salvador. Yes. That's so sad. Okay, very good. Excellent. Um Thank you for sharing uh, with us that study. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Me, teacher. Uh, Mario, okay, very good. Go ahead. Important things in life. Uh, a philosophy professor is stood before his class with some items on the table in front of him. When the class began, uh, wordlessly, he picked up a very large and empty jar and proceeded to fill it with, work, with rocks. About two inches in diameter, he then asked the students if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. So the professor then picked up a box of pebbles and pured in them into the jar. He shoved the jar lightly. The pebbles, of course, rolled into the open areas between the rocks. The hen asked the student again if the jar was full. They agreed it was. The professor uh, picked up a box and, and suddenly pured it into the jar. Of course, the sun filled everything else. He then asked Hans uh, more if the jar was full. The students, the students responded with unanimous yes. Now, say the professor, I want you to recognize, recognize that this jar represents your life. The rocks are the important things, your family, your partner, your health, your children thinks that if everything else was lost and only they remain, your life will still be full. The peoples are the other things that matter, like your, like your job, your house, your car. This scent is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand into the jar first, he continued. There is no rooms for the pebbles or the rocks. The same goes for your life if you spend all your time and energy on this small stuff. You will never have room for the things that are important to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness. Pay with your children, pay your partner or dancing. There will always be time to go to work, clean the house, give a di dinner, party, and fix the disposal. Take care of the rocks first. The things that really matter. Set your priorities. The rest is just sin. Finish. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, sir. Very good. Excellent job. Um, anyone else? wants to share something with us? Anyone else?
Jensi, okay, so it's your turn. Go ahead. Jensi? Uh, good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty well. <laughs> okay, very good. So, uh, well, uh, go ahead. Okay, my story is like the lovely man and his faithful dog. Um, okay, everything happened five years ago. There was a man named Seven who never knew where he came from because he was a very lonely person. People look at look at look at that team badly and tune the team for his dirty appearance. But one day when we had walked walking down the street he found a injured dog which he named Otto and which he saved from that signs the, the dog become his faithful friends and accompanies him everywhere. Until one day his homework died. Also strange this is forever the love for his own work was so the love for um, no great that even after his death that the dog continued to accompany him along with his grave in his church. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, give me just one minute because I want to share a study um, with you. This is, I'm sorry, probably you have listened before and because it's so popular. Give me just one moment. I, I just need to share something here. Okay. One moment, please. No, no, don't worry. Uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, share with you a study uh, that's about, well, you, you're going to listen uh, that story because it, it's a lesson that a, a professor um, just shared with some students. But uh, uh, just give me, give me one moment. Uh, I just need to figure out something here first. Don't worry. Gonna be just one minute. Just one moment, guys. I just need to do something here. Okay, let's see it.
Okay, here we have. Okay, just just pay attention to this study. Okay, this is a I was telling you that uh, well, this is a lesson that a, a professor of law just teaches to send students. And it says, I'm going to read it in first person because that's what um, how they wrote this story. Lo voy a leer en primera persona porque es la manera en la que escribieron esta historia. Este libro lo quiero compartir con ustedes, así que prestemos atención. <clears throat> and it says, um, it was my first date at law school and the professor just entered to the class and under a watchful, uh, watchful eye um, of the young students who were starting the university, the first thing he did was ask for the name of the only students sitting in front row. Okay, and he asked, what's his name as a teacher? Uh, my name is Jose, that's what he said. Um, get off my class and never come back. The teacher shoot out unpleasantly. And um, it says, my, my, my partner blank out, not knowing what to do or say. When he came to, he quickly gathered all his things in an hurry out of the class. No one in the class understood what was going on, but even so, neither or nor my classmates uh, dared to say anything. Very well. Well, let's start. What are laws for? The teacher asked uh, to everybody. We're, we're still here scared about what happened just a few minutes ago, but we end up participating anyway. So they start to have order in society uh, to be fulfilled so that people who make mistakes pay for their action. No, um, the professor just yelling it, uh, on him. Does anyone know the answer? And it says, they search so that justice is done. Uh, I say with some Chinese, at last, that is for justice, but what is justice? Uh, what is necessary to save war human rights? Answer a colleague. Uh, okay, says the professor, but what else? Uh, to differentiate good from evil and reward those who do good. Okay, okay. not bad, say the, the, the professor, but no answer these questions. How about Jack uh, correctly by spelling uh, Jose from class? Suddenly, the entire class fell silent and silence reigned for a few minutes. I want an uh, unanimous answer. Uh, that's what the teacher said. No. We answer all students at the same time uh, with the decisions. So, so everybody says no uh, to that question. Uh, could we say that I have committed an injustice? Yes, everybody said that. And why hasn't anyone done anything about it? Why do we want to lose and rule if we do not have the necessary will to pull them into practice? Each of you um, has an obligation to speak up when uh, he witnessed an injustice. Always, don't be silent again, ever again. Somebody go to get Jose, please. After all, uh, the person says, well, the, the, the person that's supposed to, to, to be the professor says, um, after all, he is the teacher of the subject. And I am just a student from another class. Uh, well, there is like um, something in order to learn here. And uh, well, 
what we have to, to pay attention here is, is to, to the following. It says, learn that when we do not defend or rights, dignity is lost and dignity cannot be negotiated. That's the uh, learning part of this study, okay? So this is something that I just want to uh, share to you. And um, now we are just going to move to um, the lessons that we're gonna be discussing for today class, okay? So uh, thank you to everybody for sharing all those stories with us and also for working on your activity. Let me just share my screen here. Give me just one moment here and here. Okay. Okay, let's go to section number four. We are almost at the end of this class and uh, well, you know, when I'm working this coming Thursday and also this coming Friday. Uh, we're gonna go to um, the lesson objective uh, 4.2 and it says, in this class, you will practice this past continuous versus the simple past, okay? This is gonna be the aim of this uh, lesson. Uh, here we have a video about the past continuous versus the simple past. Have you ever listened to uh, something about this structure before? Yes or no? Have you listened to something about the use of uh, past continuous and, and the simple past? Han escuchado o eh, han estudiado, mejor dicho. Eh, ustedes un poco acerca de lo que eh, de, acerca del uso del pasado continuo y, y el pasado simple. Yes. Sí. Yes. Yes. Muy bien, excelente. Entonces, eh, así vamos a hacer solamente este un pequeño repaso sobre este la construcción de este tipo de estructura. Eh, veamos eh, cuál serían las diferencias eh, que nosotros tenemos sobre el uso del pasado continuo y el pasado simple. Les voy a colocar este video, prestemos atención y luego discutimos. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll learn the difference between the past continuous and the simple past. Additionally, you'll learn how to express your ideas using both tenses. So, let's get started. The first thing that we need to learn is that we'll use both tenses together in order to express complex sentences. So let me give you a quick example. If you want to explain that you were doing an activity such as eating dinner and you were interrupted, uh, let's say by uh, a friend or someone called you, in order to express this idea, you must use the two tenses together. So for example, I was eating dinner last night when my girlfriend called me. So let's look at the definition. We use the past progressive with the simple past to describe an action that was interrupted by another action. So if we look at this example here, they were enjoying the morning. This is the action that was in progress. And there was an interruption. That interruption was that when the thief stole the briefcase. So now let's look at some other examples. So we got about two or three examples here. And um, again, we're trying to express that whole idea that there was a continuous action happening in the past and there was an interruption that occurred. So the example here is, while he was escaping from the bank, the robber got caught in the revolving door. So if we look at the timetable here at the bottom, we can see that the past event was, or the past continuous event was, that he was escaping from the bank. All of a sudden, this action was interrupted by this blue event, which is the robber got caught in the revolving door. Um, and then the next example is quite similar. As Jake was running towards the ball, he tripped and kicked it into the wrong goal. The last one is uh, similar. The secretary was making a speech when a protester 
threw an egg at her. Um, just a quick reminder here, um, also something that we should uh, keep in mind is that usually, not all the time, while and as will follow a past continuous statement. So as you can see, while he was escaping from the bank, as Jake was running. So typically, these words will follow a past progressive uh, statement, if you will. So what we're going to try to do next is we're going to look at a small paragraph and we're going to try to make sense of it. I will do this one together with you guys and you will do the next one. So what we want to do here is, number one, we want to identify if the statement will be in the past progressive form or it will be a simple past form. In order to do that, we must follow this um, concept that I mentioned that we will use the past continuous for an action that was in progress and the simple past for an action that interrupted that particular action. So the two events are related to one another. Um, sometimes the events may be separate from each other and that's when uh, that's the kind of thing that you need to understand. So let's look at the first one. What you're going to do is you're going to use these verbs in parentheses that you see here and you will either turn those into a past progressive form or a simple past form. So while diverge, as I mentioned previously, uh, typically we will use, whenever you see this word, it will typically follow a past progressive form. But let's make sure that it makes sense. While, so while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they, and here we should use this verb, okay, but then we have to change that into a past progressive form. So let's see. So while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they discover a shipwreck containing gold worth $2 million. So yes, it looks like this first event is related to the second sentence. Therefore, this is the action that was in progress, and this next sentence is the interruption of this event. So let's kind of like make it work. So while divers were working, That'll be our first answer there. Off the coast of Florida, they discover a shipwreck containing gold worth $2 million. Okay, so that makes sense for the first one there. Now let's look at the next one. The divers. Uh, and also the next sentence also appears that there was an action that was in progress and then there was an interruption. Okay, so this one, uh, we're going to use the verbs in parentheses. So, so the divers, and we're going to say where, we're going to take that verb and we need to change that into a progressive form. We're filming a show about the coral reef when they found the gold. And we also need to change that verb into a past form. So there we go. Okay, so what I would like for you to do is to identify whether the sentences are related to one another. Okay, we're going to stop there because this is going to be the activity that we're going to be working on. Um, guys, I think, uh, well, some of you uh, just mentioned that you had been um, discussing about the uses of uh, of um, the simple to a past and also the past continuous. Um, I'm going to share uh, a whiteboard just a, to, well, share to you a, the structure that, that we're gonna be using in order to construct sentences like this, using uh, the past continuous plus the simple past. Give me just one moment while I share that whiteboard. Okay, can you see the whiteboard right now? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, I see. very good. So um, guys, uh, the first thing that we need to mention is that um, we're talking about uh, sentences uh, composed by it. If the past continue and also using the simple past, uh, we wanna use a, like a, a timeline in order to identify, sorry for, for that line, but this is the, 
I'm using my mouse, so it, it is not possible to, well, let me try to do something else. I think it's gonna be possible. Let me see if this works. Yeah, it's gonna be better. Okay, like that. So uh, just let me tell you that in, in a case of um, a timeline, when we're gonna be uh, discussing about the, the inaction um, that just start in the past and is interrupted in one moment in, in the same uh, time, so but in the past. So that, that's mean um, that something be began uh, in the past and was interrupted by something. So when we use that uh, analogy in order to construct this kind of sentence, we wanna say like that um, we wanna create something using the, the past continuum. Like I was a, taking a shower, I was a, brushing my, my, my teeth, my teeth, I mean teeth, in plural, in plural I mean. Uh, or I was uh, working on my homework. If you notice, this kind of a structure is not complete. Why? Because um, it is supposed that something else happened in order to stop that action. So, uh, also, I mean, we can say like, um, well, uh, I was driving my car. When I crash, okay, um, I was uh, studying for the exam when my brother called me. So I was doing something in the past when something in the past happened and it stopped that action that I was doing before. So that's going to be like the analogy when I'm using this kind of sentence. Um, and uh, as you can see there, there are like uh, two words that are gonna be connecting these kind of sentences. Um, we're gonna use when, or we can also use as. As I was uh, working on my homework, my mother came. So when I, if you see there, uh, we're using both sentences in order to complete and give an, uh, um, to the person that is listening to us, a better understanding about what we are sharing with them um, when we are in conversation. So um, this is going to be just a review about the uh, structure that we're going to be using in order to construct sentences in a uh, past continuous. Remember that when we uh, create sentences, we want to be using always a subject. After the subject, we want to be using the case of a sentence that's going to be in affirmative form, right? So we want to be using the subject plus was or where plus the verb, main verb, when I say main verb, main verb with the ing form, okay? I was working, I was uh, writing, uh, they were studying. So this is going to be the, the, um, the uh, like the uh, most important elements of past continuous. Subject plus the auxiliary verb plus the main verb. But also, if we want to share something else, we can include a complement, just in order to provide some extra uh, information. A complement and this. When I say like, these are the four um, elements that we want to be using for past continuous. Subject plus was, where, plus the main verb with the ing and the complement. So in a case, we want to construct sentences using, a, as I mentioned before, affirmative form. It's gonna be the affirmative form. So um, if we wanna 
a construct a sentence using the negative form. Okay. Wanna be um, using a, the same structure, but we wanna include the adverb not. Wanna use subject plus was, or in this case we can use word too, plus the adverb not plus the main verb with the ing, ing form. And also remember that we can include a complement or an object. Okay, this is the um, second structure. I want to use affirmative form, and in this one, we're going to be using negative form. Okay. Uh, these are the, the two ones that we're going to be using in order to construct a sentence in affirmative negative form uh, using the past continuous uh, in order to express that something is going to be as, uh, interrupted using the simple past in this case. Um, well, uh, in order to construct the simple past, remember that we want to be using an affirmative sentence. Just let me take a look of this. Uh, affirmative, one moment, please. The affirmative form is going to be for simple past the subject plus verb in past plus the complement. There's something that we need to take care about it uh, when we are going to construct sentences using the uh, affirmative form um, for the simple past. And uh, I mentioned this because um, we have two different uh, type of verbs. We have the regular verbs and also we have the irregular verbs. Have you ever listened about that? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. So in regular verbs, remember that, uh, or it's easy to identify them because all of them ends in ed, okay? But when we're talking about regular verbs, that means that all these uh, verbs are gonna change the structure and um, sometimes how we uh, write them or sometimes how we pronounce them, okay? So I uh, wanna just take um, a, a look of them. So remember that also, uh, if we're gonna use the irregular uh, verbs, there is no rule that we can use in order to identify them. What are the only thing that we have to do with irregular verbs, you know that? Learning. Learn mm -hmm. all of them, yes, memorize them, okay? So uh, just remember that when you're gonna you're gonna uh, write sentences in uh, irregular verbs that uh, must often change the structure. I mean, the, how they how we can write them, and also sometimes there, there are some of them that we can just uh, write in the same way, but the pronunciation is going to be uh, different. Or sometimes we wanna use the same the same verb like uh, sit sit sit. So uh, there there are some verbs that in present past and past participle gonna be the same. Okay, so guys, um, the uh, this is going to be the affirmative form for um, negative. I mean for affirmative form for uh, simple past. But uh, also we have a different structure. Um, we wanna use the Sorry, this must be green. And give me just one moment. When I use the negative form with a different structure, negative. The negative form is a little bit uh, easier than using the affirmative form. Why? Because in this case, we have some, a specific structure and also we have an auxiliary verb. In order to construct sentences like this, we're gonna use the subject, as you know, 
we always in, in English always we have to use the subject. When I use the subject, sorry, subject. When I use in this case the auxiliary verb it, because we are writing sentences in negative form using um, using the auxiliary verb did. So we're going to use the adverb and also we are going to use the main verb. Plus, most of the cases, we want to be using a complement. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the negative structure for a simple pass. Uh, there, uh, in the main word, we have to take uh, care that uh, all the words that we are going to use in negative, when we refer to the main word, all words must be in infinitive form. That's mean that we don't have to change anything. So it's gonna keep the same way that uh, we uh, found it in infinitive form. Infinitive form, I mean um, the the like the base form of the verb. Okay. So if we're gonna use the verb right, so we're gonna keep right. We are not going to change the 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 verb in past. That that's something that we need to remember when we're going to construct negative sentences. Um, in simple pass. Well, do you take note of all these structures? Yes, no? Yes. Yes, okay, very good. Uh, guys, you're going to have an activity for tomorrow. You are going to write two sentences for each form. You're gonna write two sentences uh, in my apologies because I haven't uh, write the name of, uh, of each one. Just give me one moment, I'm going to do that. This is going to be the past continuous and well, I'm going to change the color it can be in blue. And this is going to be the simple past. Well, there you have. Um, Affirmative, negative, affirmative, and negative. All those forms. And I was mentioning to you that uh, for tomorrow, you are going to write two sentences per each one. Two sentences for affirmative form in past continue, two sentences in negative form for past continuous, and also you are going to include two sentences using uh, affirmative form and just in simple past and two sentences using negative form in simple past. At the end, you are going to bring eight different sentences. Okay? Is it clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, good. So, guys, time is over, um, and but we are going to be working on 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 this tomorrow because we have a lot of things to discuss about the use of uh, a past, past continuous and also the simple past. And uh, tomorrow we are going to learn how to join a sentence using past continuous plus simple past as we um, watch uh, the video for. Okay, so you tomorrow and blessings to all of you. I don't know if any, any of you has any question. Do you have any question before leaving? No, yes. teacher. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, very good. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Blessings to all of you. Have a nice night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.